In his landmark article, Resolving the Coronary Artery Disease Epidemic Through Plant-Based Nutrition, Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn notes how fortunate we are to possess the knowledge of how to prevent arrest and selectively reverse this disease. However, he goes on to lament we are not fortunate in the capacity of our institutions to share this information with the public. He blames ties to industry and politics, resulting in conflicts of interest within our private and governmental health institutions compromising the accuracy of their public message. This is in total violation of the moral imperative of the medical profession, of course. Now is the time for us to have the courage for a legendary work, he concludes, science must dictate dietary recommendations. After all, the fact that a low-fat, fiber-rich vegan diet is likely to reduce risk for most types of cancer, ischemic heart disease and its complications, obesity, diabetes, hypertension, osteoporosis, multiple sclerosis, gallstones, renal stones, appendicitis, diverticulitis, hiatal hernia, varicose veins, hemorrhoids, and possibly the chief metabolic complications of pregnancy, disorders which collectively are responsible for the majority of the deaths and hospitalizations in Western society should be sufficient to recommend it. Of course, those who are only willing to make less striking changes in their lifestyle can be encouraged to reduce their consumption of animal products as much as they can. In the process of writing this paper on the comparative endocrinological effects of plant versus animal proteins, the researcher himself was overwhelmed by the balance of evidence and disclosed that you know, during the course of researching and writing this article, my findings impelled me to become a vegan. Why don't more within the scientific and medical community similarly embrace a plant-based diet? Part of the reason may be the tomato effect. Coined in the Journal of the American Medical Association 27 years ago, the tomato effect describes the rejection of highly efficacious therapies by the medical establishment because they happen to go against the prevailing conventional wisdom. Imported from the New World by the year 1560, the tomato was becoming a staple of the continental European diet. At the same time, it was actively shunned in North America for literally centuries. The reason is simple. They were poisonous. Everyone knew they were poisonous, at least everyone in North America. It was obvious. Evidently, it was not until 1820 when some dude ate a tomato on the steps of some courthouse and survived did things finally change. And today, in the United States, tomatoes are a billion-dollar crop. Examples of this tomato effect, a slavish devotion to orthodoxy, are mentioned in uh, medicine. For example, uh, ignoring the successful use of this plant in the treatment of gout for a thousand years before modern medicine quote-unquote discovered it was the drug colchicine. Aspirin was also ignored for almost 3,000 years of successful use as a willow tree bark extract. But I'd like to extend the tomato effect analogy into the field of nutrition. For example, thousands died of scurvy, vitamin C deficiency, for a hundred years after lemon juice was found to cure it, because disease at the time was considered an imbalance of the humors. What role could eating fruit possibly play? A century later, in the mid-1800s, humanity came up with the brilliant idea to polish rice from brown to white, causing an epidemic of sudden death from heart attack in Asia. Millions died of beriberi, a vitamin B deficiency that affects the heart muscle. Again, the cure was discovered, rice bran or rice bran tea, yet there were decades of death before the medical community finally woke up and actually adopted it. Today, there is another epidemic of sudden death from heart attack. It too is caused by diet, and it too has a cure. How long must we wait?
McCarty ends this paper, I suspect that the simple injunction, do not eat animal products, has the potential to do more for world health than all the abstruse wisdom in all the medical libraries combined.